What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and in this video, we're going to be doing a really in depth benchmark of Cyberpunk 2077. We'll be checking the effect each and every individual setting has on FPS in the game. Some of them are rather surprising and have a huge impact, most of the other ones have barely any impact at all, which is also surprising. Something I've noticed while benchmarking this game using a 1080 Ti, a higher end build, and a 1050, a much lower end build, is that this game is incredibly difficult to run. A 1080 Ti used to be considered really high end, but now I think it's somewhere more around the mid range, with a 1050 being on the really low end. I know that they say you need a 970 or something to run this game, which is incredibly low considering that running this game on the absolute minimum settings with a 1050 result in really, really terrible FPS, and you'll see them in just a moment. Currently in the background, I'm not exactly sure how to present these, so I'll just simply run through them. You'll see a comparison between the three or four different values of each and every different setting, and you'll see a graph on the screen to see exactly how they compare. So let's simply start by running through them. No, they're not all from the graphics tab, they're from around different places and they usually have more of an effect on other games. So let's run through some basic settings. First of all, field of view. The more you see, the more it will have to be rendered. There's a very slight trend pointing towards fewer FOV gives you more FPS, but between the maximum 100 and minimum 70, there's about a one or two frame difference, which is really unnoticeable on both my high end 1080 Ti and the 1050. Texture quality is something you can only change on the main menu. I didn't expect too much of an effect here as it should mainly affect the VRAM inside of your computer. The 1080 Ti showed a very slight trend for more FPS towards the lower end, with about 3 FPS in difference between the high and the low settings. The 1050, however, noticed absolutely no difference between high, medium and low other than the stability of the 1% and 0.1% FPS minimum, meaning that running on the higher setting probably led to more stuttering while playing the game. Then we have in improved facial lighting geometry. With this setting turned on, you'll expect to lose 1 or 2 FPS on a 1080 Ti, or on a much lower end graphics card, for some reason there was absolutely no difference between the two. Getting into some shadows, contact shadows, once again, turning on will only result in about 1 FPS lost for both a 1080 Ti and a 1050. Local mesh quality is basically unnoticeably different between any of the settings on my 1080 or 1050. There's basically nothing different between them. The only difference I noticed was on the 1080 Ti where the 0.1% average seemed to get a bit better the lower the setting was set, so it could help reduce stuttering if you'd lowered the setting. Then we have local shadow quality. Again, it has basically no effect no matter what setting it's on. However, on the lower end 1050, there was a bit of an upwards trend towards the lower end side of the setting, where we gained about 1 FPS in total between high and off. Then we have distant shadows resolution. Once again, basically no difference between high and low, and on the 1050, even less of a difference. The only noticeable difference on both the 1080 Ti and 1050 is that the lower the setting is, the more instability I seem to get in game, the 0.1% average drops when the setting is lowered for some reason. Then cascaded shadows range. The lower you have this set, the better your performance will be. You'll gain about 3 FPS by lowering it from high to low on a 1080 Ti, and if you're using a lower end graphics card, you won't notice any difference. Cascaded shadows resolution, once again, you can expect about 1 FPS gain between high and low. The same goes for a 1050. Then one of the more interesting ones is volumetric fog resolution. Changing this from ultra to low raised our FPS by about 7 in total, which is rather massive, and it really increased the 0.1% average, meaning that your game should be a ton more stable the lower the setting is. On the 1050, we saw the exact same thing, but we gained about 3 FPS in total. Then we have volumetric cloud quality, which seemed to remain exactly the same on no matter what setting it was set to. And we had almost the exact same result on the 1050, though there was about 0.5 frames difference between the ultra and the off setting. Then we have have max dynamic decals, I'm pretty sure that this would be different if there was lots of action going on, and the lower you have the setting during action, the more noticeable the FPS gain will be. However, while standing still in this area, there was absolutely no difference between the four settings. Then we have anisotropic filtering. Having the setting between 1 and 16 resulted in absolutely no difference on the 1080 Ti and 1050. One of the more interesting ones is the screen space reflections quality. I don't have RTX on my PC, as I only have a 1080 and a 1050, but between the two graphics cards, there is a huge performance increase that you can get by lowering the screen space reflections quality setting. On Psycho, it runs at about 39 FPS and set to off 
it's about 56. That's a difference of about 17 frames, which is absolutely massive. The 1050 saw the exact same thing, where we jumped from 10 frames all the way up to 21, 11 frames in total. That's more than half the total FPS gained by lowering the setting. Then we have subsurface scattering quality, which seemed to have no noticeable difference between all three of the settings. Once again, it probably is very situational. As far as I know, it only affects skin and play models, so I would assume if you're standing really close to someone, this will become a noticeable visual effect and you may gain or lose some FPS depending on what people are doing and facial animations. Then we have ambient occlusion. By lowering the setting, you can expect to gain 3 or so FPS, and on a lower end PC, you can expect to gain possibly even more. The difference of course between 3 FPS on the 1080 Ti and the 3 FPS gained on the 1050 is that on the 1050, you only started with about 19 and ended with 21. On the 1080 Ti, you started with 51 and ended with 54. It's a pretty large gain for lower end GPUs. Then we have color precision. I would always have this set to high to avoid color banding, as color banding can be an incredibly bad experience no matter what your setup is. Luckily, there's only a really tiny performance difference between medium and high. Then we have mirror quality. Unfortunately, there weren't any mirrors where I tested this, but I would assume that lowering this would give you much better FPS. I did of course actually repeat this test in front of a mirror at the starting point of the game. On my 1080 Ti, from high I went from 38 average to 51 average on low in a pretty linear graph. Off. My 1050 had the exact same thing from 13 on high to 20 on low. Now, of course, you're probably not going to take too much from this, but when I was recording with OBS Studio and I was game capturing, I saw exactly how this was done without ray tracing. Of course, they use a second camera that's pointing at you and of course project whatever's coming from said camera onto the object in game, the mirror, and apply a little texture to it. But I've never seen it come out like this, like it did in OBS. Of course, it was very glitchy and of course reversed, but you can see both camera angles. It's not actually too bad how they've done it. It doesn't exactly halve your FPS to have a higher quality, but of course it does have a rather big impact and the lower the quality the setting is, the better your FPS will be in front of a mirror. Then we have level of detail. I'm pretty sure that this will only start to affect you when you're navigating between areas rather quickly, such as traveling in a vehicle. When standing still, there's absolutely no FPS difference between the three settings. Then we have crowd density. Surprisingly, when I loaded into this world in the busy or not busy states, lowering the settings seemed to do absolutely nothing for both FPS and for the actual number of people or NPCs in the world, which was rather surprising. Then we have HUD visibility. I didn't expect too much of an FPS increase over this, and of course having the HUD completely on or completely off had no effect on FPS. With all of that aside, basically everything in my previous optimization video was bright, and you can use this video to build out your expectations if you don't already have the game. Something that I did notice was the incredibly terrible performance on my 1050, which to me isn't too much of an old graphics card, but it is on the lower end of the 10 series, for which we now have the 20 and 30 series. If I quickly look for the minimum requirements, they suggest at minimum a GTX 780 or an RX 470. But no matter how low I lowered the settings in game, I still couldn't break about 25 FPS. I only started to get good FPS when I lowered the resolution. I performed all these tests at 1080p on both my 1080 Ti and my 1050, and the 1050 got about 20 FPS on average. I dropped it to 1600 by 900, got about 25, 1360 by 768, 26, 1280 by 720, 32, 720p once again, but I enabled the setting that allows you to drop the resolution scale and I dropped it to about 75%, which was half of the way of the slider, to which I only got about 39 FPS. Dropping it all the way down to the minimum was 50 resolution scale, so I was rendering it at half of 720p, with which I only averaged about 41.9 FPS with a 0.1% average of 29 FPS, which means that my game was extremely stuttery while playing it and it only averaged about 40 FPS in total, with the absolute lowest settings possible that you could possibly get. I tried dropping my display resolution even lower in Windows, but it didn't seem to want to go below 720p. But of course, as fun as it is to make fun of a game's optimization, this is obviously something that CD Projekt Red is going to be working on incredibly hard, as it's probably the one thing that's going to cause this game to fail, if anything. Optimization is extremely important, and of course they're going to get to it. But anyways, this video is a bit different to the usual, hopefully you found some interest in it, and if you'd like to check any of my numbers, there'll be a spreadsheet linked in the description down below. Simply clicking it will open it up on Google Docs and you can inspect things in more detail if you'd like. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobe here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.